Today I wanted to talk about an endurance training technique that's extremely effective and honestly I'm surprised a whole lot more people don't know about this given how effective it is. And it has to do with training at zone 2. And I'll be talking about what that is today and why that's so effective. So as, as you know, your body has two primary types of muscle fibers. You have slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers. Slow twitch fibers primarily are fat burning. And fast twitch muscles primarily burn glucose or, or glycogen. When you're exercising, you create lactic acid in, in differing amounts. The harder you work, the more you, the more you create. Um, Lance Armstrong, for example, had a genetic mutation that allowed him to produce much less lactate than regular athletes. That's why when they got to the hill events, he just kind of stood up in the stirrups and went up the hill past everybody. He, because what lactate does is it not only does it make your legs sore, it makes them, it makes them tired. He had a much higher lactate threshold than everybody else did. And so he didn't, he didn't get tired, he didn't burn out, he just went up the hill. So sometime in the last 20 or 30 years, I don't, I don't know when, scientists figured out that you could improve that threshold. You could increase that threshold by training right on the ragged edge of that threshold. They call that a zone two exercise. Um, and, and in this, you train hard enough to create lactate, but slow enough that your body is able to clear it away. So here, here's what's going on down at the cellular level. So you have MCT in your cells, and the job of MCT is to take the lactate and shuttle it over to the mitochondria, and the mitochondria burn it as fuel. In zone two training, you're training at a slow enough pace, the MCT is able to, to, to shuttle away the, the lactate as fast as you create it. And by training, consistently right on the edge, you can increase the amount of MCT that you have. And so you are able to work your muscles harder without generating a noticeable amount of lactate. And by not generating lactate, your muscles don't get fatigued nearly as fast. Once you switch out of zone two, you, uh, you start to generate lactate and become fatigued. When you're in zone two, you can talk comfortably. It's not quite the same as sitting down and having a conversation, but you shouldn't have any trouble talking with people or breathing through your nose while you work out. It really is a slow pace. If you want to do it based on heart rate, which is what I do, a very rough rule of thumb is to take 180 and subtract your age. And then if you're in pretty good shape, you can adjust upward or downward. But what, what you're looking for is a rate at which you can train and just kind of keep a steady heartbeat. If if your heart rate starts to run away from you, you're that's because you're starting to burn glucose. And so you want to slow back down until your heart rate st stabilizes again. But that's how you do zone two training. I, I do zone two workouts several times a week and it's, I mean, it feels like an abnormally low pace because you can comfortably go at it for really indefinitely because you're clearing away the lactate as you go. And they, they recommend doing it three or four times a week for about an hour at a time. So it, it does take a fair, a fair amount of effort. Not only that, it's a slow adaptation. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes, it takes weeks, months, etc., to show even marginal improvements. But over time, it can make a really big difference. So for example, if you can generate 300 watts of power without lactose buildup and other people can only generate 200, you'll have a tremendous advantage over them. So this slow training in zone two allows that to happen. In preparation for the 2014 Winter Olympics, the Dutch speed skating team did a lot of zone two training, which means they spent a lot of time skating at what would, what would have been an uncomfortably slow pace. But take a look at the medal count. So here we are, Sochi 2014 speed skating results, 10,000 meter men, all Netherlands. All right, let's go to the next event. 1,000 meter men's, oh, Netherlands, Canada, Netherlands. If we go to the 1,500 meter women's, uh, they had they got two medals. China got the gold, but they got two medals there. If we go to the 1,500 men's, uh, they they snuck silver. And Netherlands uh, is not the Netherlands is not a very big country. 1,500, they it was a clean sweep. They got all three medals. 
and and so on. In the two by five hundred men's, they again they swept it. Why were they so effective? Because when they went all out full speed and generated lactose like everyone else, they had trained so that they were able to clear away lactose a lot faster than everybody else, and so they accumulated it less and got less fatigued. It's a fairly easy trick, and I'm honestly surprised that not many people have learned about it. Anyway, if if this could potentially be helpful, um, click like, subscribe, do, do all of that, and uh, best of luck in your training.